Well, all our members, uh, I'm informed that we still don't have quorum. May the bell be rang. Quorum bell be rang. The Speaker of the National Assembly, Honorable Justin Maturi, has just ordered that the bell be rung. This is to allow for more members to access the chamber. As it stands, the House does not have the requisite yes, number to allow for it to proceed Speaker, with the business of the day. Other bills lined up for tabling before the House this morning session is the Institute of Social Work, Professionals Bill, 2020. Surely, you know, sometimes you look with uh, a precision some roles performed by some of you. I don't want to say who particularly. Because as you know, you're going to be already out there looking for members. Now, maybe somebody could look for the Honorable Junette and the Honorable Dr. Eseli Simu and uh, remind them that they are whips. I see the Honorable Sankok wants to go and look for them. The proceedings of the House are at a standstill right now. This is to allow for more members to access the chamber, owing to the fact that the business of the House cannot commence without the quorum having been attained. The Public Debt Management Authority Bill 2020 has also been lined up for tabling. And the principal object of that bill is to establish the Public Debt Management Authority as an independent body to manage the public debt in the country, both at both levels of this Kenyan government. And the country's debt is rising at alarming level. And the proposal of the bill says that there is need to manage the same to protect current and future generation. The authority shall succeed the Public Debt Management Office currently domiciled at the National Treasury. The bill also sets out the conditions to be fulfilled before the Cabinet Secretary for the National Treasury or the County Executive Member for Finance raises a loan, issues security or guarantees loans. The national government in this particular proposal may only borrow money for the budget as approved by Parliament and the allocations for loans approved by the House in addition, the Cabinet Secretary for National Treasury or the County Executive Member for Finance must obtain the concurrence of the authority before borrowing money. The Public Procurement and Asset Disposal Amendment Bill 2020, sponsored by Honorable Richard Tongi, seeks to amend various provisions of the Public Procurement and Asset Disposal Act number 33 of 2015 on reservations and preferences. The Alcoholic Drinks Control Bill, a bill sponsored by Honorable Hundai for Hundai constituency Danson Mashako, seeks to amend the Alcoholic Drinks Control Act number 10 of 2010. This is to ensure that packaging of alcoholic drinks is in quantities not below 700 and 50 milliliters. According to the MP, this will curb the menace of excessive drinkings occasioned by the sale of very low packaged quantities of alcoholic drinks, as well as making it inaccessible to the youth. The Alcoholic Drinks Bill further seeks to provide a depository fund 
for the purchase of alcoholic drinks in glass bottles. According to the Honourable Member, this will boost recycling of glass bottles and inevitably reduce environmental pollution by cutting waste. The Information Communication Technologies Practitioners Bill, a bill by nominated MP Godfrey Osotzi, has also been lined up for tabling this morning session. And the bill seeks to establish a legal framework for the training matters registration as well as licensing and standards of information communication technologies ICT and in particular quorum. the quorum has been attained and allow handy over for the live broadcast order number one administration of oath Order number two, communication from the chair. The member, is this a member for Kisi? If you could, yes, you can consult the member you're consulting. Uh, take a seat, it is um, a lot more comfortable. Is it the member for Kisi or is it? A member for Homer Bay. Problems of the mask. One of the members, I wish to welcome you to today's uh, special sitting of the House which has been convened pursuant to the provision of standing order number 29 and duly gazetted to find Kenya Gazette notice number 10690 of the 16th of, 16th of December 2020. The business to be transacted is as published in the Gazette. The notification of the special sittings was also made to all members by the clerk of the National Assembly in the usual manner, including publication in two newspapers of national circulation. Have you seen that on our members? With regard to the processing of priority bills and statutory instruments during the recess period, you will recall that on the 3rd of December 2020, this House ordered as follows. One, should a bill be published during the recess period, or a published bill becomes due for first reading during the period, the Speaker shall, upon lapse of at least three days following the publication of the bill and following a determination that such bill is, a pri is of priority, forthwith refer such bill to the relevant committee for consideration pursuant to the provision of standing under 127, which deals with the committee of bills to committees and public participation. And upon the resumption of the House, cause the bill to be read the first time, and the second reading may be taken forthwith, or on such other day as the House Business Committee may determine. Number two, should any statutory instrument be transmitted for tabling before the House during the recess period, the Speaker shall, following a determination that the statutory instruments is of priority, forthwith refer the statutory instrument to the relevant committee for consideration and cause the statutory instrument to be tabled in the House at its next sitting in accordance with the provisions of Section 11 of the Statutory Instruments Act No. 3 of 2013. Honourable Members, in furtherance to this order of the House, I wish to report as follows. One, the tax laws amendment number two bill, National Assembly Bill number 48 of 2020, was published on November 27, 2020, and determined to be of priority. I therefore refer the bill to the Departmental Committee on Finance and National Planning for consideration. The committee is expected to table its report this morning to pave way for the consideration of the bill in other stages later in this sitting during the afternoon sitting. Number two, the anti-doping amendment bill, National Assembly Bill number 48 of 2020. This must be a mistake. 
was published on 7th of December 2020, and having determined it to be a priority bill, I refer the same to the Departmental Committee on Sports, Culture, and Tourism for consideration. I also expect the committee to table its report this morning to pave way for consideration of the bill in other stages. And three, the value added tax amendment, amendment of the rate of tax order number 2020, being legal notice number 206 of 2020, was submitted by the Cabinet Secretary for the National Treasury and Planning for tabling and consideration by the National Assembly. Having determined the statutory instrument to be of priority, I refund it to the Committee on Delegated Legislation for consideration. I also expect the Committee to table its report in the House today morning so as to inform the consideration of the statutory instrument later in the day in keeping with the requirements of the law. The House is therefore accordingly informed and guided. I thank you, members. Sorry, maybe those members who are making their way in. Member who is in motion, can you come to some can halt? Honour members, on a sad note, I wish to inform you that uh, I did notify members of the National Assembly and the entire parliamentary fraternity of the untimely passing on of the member for Kabuchai constituency, the Honourable James Lusweti Mukwe, MP, on the 4th of December 2020. Upon receiving the sudden news of the death of the member, I constituted an ad, hoc an ad hoc committee under the chairmanship of the member for Kwanza constituency, the Honorable Ferdinand Wanyoni, MP, to assist the family with funeral and written arrangements on behalf of the National Assembly in line with the Parliamentary Service Commission bereavement policy. Honorable members, the late Honorable Lusweti made his first attempt into elective national politics as a fond Kenya youth winger in the mid-90s, and in 2002, he successfully vied for and won a seat of councillor for Chuele Ward in the then Bugoma County Council, a position to which he was re-elected in 2007 general elections. During his tenure as a councillor, the Honorable Lusweti and the trust of his fellow councillors and got elected as a chairman for Bungoma County Council in 2004, a position he held until 2007. The late Honorable Lusweti was known for his servant leadership approach as a councillor and the chairman of Bungoma County Council, which catapulted him to the National Assembly when he successfully vied for the Kapuchai and won the Kapuchai constituency parliamentary seat on a Ford Kenya party ticket in 2013. He was re-elected in 2017 and continued to diligently serve the people until his untimely death on the 4th of December 2020. The parliamentary community knew him as a humble, sociable, and hardworking person. Until his death, he actively served as a member of the Select Committee on National Cohesion and Equal Opportunities, and before then, he served as a member of the Select Committee on National Government Constituency Development Fund and the Departmental Committees on Trade, Industry and Cooperatives in the 12th Parliament, and in the Budget and Appropriations Committee, and the Departmental Committee on Transport, Public Works and Housing in the 11th Parliament. We will all remember the late Honorable Lusweti for his passionate advocacy for the education rights of children and entrenchment of sound fiscal management of public funds allocated to ensure universal access to basic education. Honorable members, I take this opportunity to sincerely thank the ad hoc committee led by the member for Kwanzaa, the Honorable Ferdinand Wanyonyi, uh, and all members and the entire parliamentary fraternity for the support extended to his family during the funeral of our departed colleague 
was interned at his home in Chuele location, Kabuchai constituency, on Saturday, December 19, 2020. Our members, on behalf of the mem member, of all members and staff of the National Assembly, and indeed on my own behalf, I once again convey the heartfelt condolences of the National Assembly and that of the entire parliamentary fraternity to the family of the late Honorable James Mukwe Lusweti, his relatives, friends, and the people of Kabuchai constituency. Honorable members, in tribute and honor to our departed colleague, the late Honorable James Mukwe Lusweti MP, I request that we all rise in our places and observe a moment of silence. So rest in eternal peace. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as well, I was one of the members of the Ad Hoc Committee, and on the behalf of the Chairman of the Ad Hoc Committee, I also want to thank you, Mr. Speaker, in a big way for the big support that you gave this committee. And also, more importantly, Mr. Speaker, to thank the honorable members of the National Assembly. When we buried the late Mukwe over the weekend, Mr. Speaker, the number was overwhelming. We had members of parliament in excess of 40. And this is the time, Mr. Speaker, we are aware that there was another big funeral in Eastern Province of the late uh, John Nyaga. So I want to thank the honorable members. At a time like this, members have been on the front line because, Mr. Speaker, you'll never know what will happen tomorrow. Mr. Speaker, we all of us going, just like William Shakespeare says, that this world is a stage and we are here like actors. We are acting and will eventually exit. Honorable Mukwe had exited and those of you who you know him, he was a very humble man, Mr. Speaker. In many occasions, you'll never bother to see or to sit in front of a member of parliament. He was very humble. And during tea break, you'll see him cutting across, liasing with people, whether they are Tanga Tanga, whether whether it's ODM or whatever, Mr. Speaker. And actually, this is the spirit that honorable members should borrow from. We can, Mr. Speaker, we can differ ideologically, but the friendship of the house must be maintained, Mr. Speaker. And uh, the people of Kapchai, Mr. Speaker, they were very friendly. People thought chaos will be there. Mr. Speaker, there were no chaos. Everything was in control, apart from some honorable members who had uh, bad motives. When they were called to eulogize, they refused because the ground could not allow them, Mr. Speaker. So we must be each brother's keeper. And Mr. Speaker, you are well represented ably by Honorable Wangui. Honorable Wangui, we really want to thank you. You've taken over as a very good whip. When this house didn't have a quorum, you're the only whip was in the house. Lucky enough, Honorable Selye has just entered. I think he's still picking up. I want to thank you, Mr. Speaker. Now, Bukose. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I want to join my colleague to pay tribute to our departed colleague, the Honorable Mukwe, member for Kabuchai. And on behalf of uh, the member for Kwanza, who is my neighbor, Honorable Ferdinand Onyonyi, uh, I want to also join, uh, Honorable Ferdinand called me this morning. He, is not, he was not able to make it to Nairobi because uh, he was also, once after the function, uh, he's uh, resting a bit in, uh, at home and also looking at the issues pertaining to his constituency. And being my neighbor, uh, he told me to thank the, com the ad hoc committee and more so the speaker and, uh, and your office, Honorable Speaker, for the support which you gave the ad hoc committee in giving a decent send off to our departed colleague, the Honorable Mukwe. 
uh, Honorable Speaker, on behalf of the people of Endebes and Transoya, Pungoma and the Kabuchai is our neighboring, and therefore we, we really feel the loss of our brother. May his soul rest in eternal peace. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I also want to express my appreciation to the leadership of his house that uh, put in place everything necessary to ensure that my neighbor and my colleague, Honorable James Nuswet Mukwe, is given a befitting send-off for sure. And I am convinced that wherever he is, he is resting in peace. I thank you. Nominee 001. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, for giving me this opportunity also to send uh, to really uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker, first of all, for uh, you being represented by Honorable Wangwe, our whip, Honorable Speaker. The function was very well attended by members of this uh, House, Honorable Speaker. And we just want to uh, reassure the family that we are with them, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I also want to thank specifically His Excellency, Honorable Dr. William Samuel Rapruto, who had to attend both a funeral, even though they are more than 700 kilometers apart, but he made sure that he is always with us, with the members of this house, so that he mourn with us. That day he was very busy. He also flew all the way to Narok after that particular burial. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. We want to reassure the family on behalf of the 6.5 million Kenyans I represent this house that we are with them. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I also wish to join my colleagues in extending my condolences and those of my constituents of Ugunja. To the family and friends of uh, the late uh, colleague, Honorable James Lusweti. Uh, I happen to have had a history uh, with Honorable Lusweti in my formative years when I worked uh, in Western Kenya as a manager for BAT. I lived in his constituency, which was then the greater series here. And indeed, I opened an operation zone in a place called Mowaya which is within his Kabuchai constituency. And James Lusweti was a true gentleman, we must uh, ad admit. He used to sit somewhere here, even in the last parliament. He was a very, very humble uh, legislator uh, who had friends across the board. He, he, he didn't like controversy at all, okay? Even in those days when we used to be militant and we were fighting all over here, James Lusweti was uh, very, very, very well composed, and he could not actually raise a finger, okay? So we, we joined the family and friends uh, really in, uh, in, in, in passing these condolences, yeah, and knowing full well that all of us uh, are heading in that direction. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Member for Ainab Koy. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, sir, permit me to convey my heartfelt sorrow for our colleague who passed on, the late Honorable James Luswete Makwe. He was indeed a distinct patriot. He was a true Kenyan. Nevertheless, he believed in this country. I want to convey my heartfelt congratulations to you, our speaker, who happens to be a general giant. You deposited in your own heart, Honorable James Kabu. So, <clears throat> Honorable Speaker, you are a great man. We love you. May and, and the people of Ainapoi constituency, I convey their heartfelt sorrow on behalf of Ainapoi constituency and Wazengishu County. I thank you, Mr. Speaker, and may God rest his soul in eternal peace. Thank you and amen. Member for Funula. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. On behalf of the people of Funula and on behalf 
I send my sincere condolences to the family of my former colleague, the MP for Kabuchai. I met Honorable Sweti when I joined Parliament and we served with him in the same Committee of Trade, Industry and Cooperative. And indeed, he amazed me at his humility. He amazed me at his story to, to come here and really demonstrated that you can rise from a councillor and become a decent man to sit in the August House. We also happen to have to share with him the same fund accounts manager and occasionally we consulted <coughs> quite often in respect of matters relating to our two constituencies because we had to find a schedule to share the fund manager. On my behalf again, I send my sincere condolences and I pray the family gain strength in these times of grief. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Member for Nabaholo. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, allow me first and foremost to really thank you in two fronts, Honorable Speaker. First, as the Chairman of Parliamentary Service Commission, where you really stood firm, and as the employer of the late, uh, the late James Mukwe, you really gave him what he really required uh, at his time of need. Both when he was alive, Honorable Speaker, the family confirmed that you really stepped in and supported the medical bills that James Mukwe had through. But God loved him most. He took him. And upon even his, 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 that takeover, Honorable Speaker, you stood with the family as the employer and really supported the family for the last benefits and last end of Honorable Speaker. They really thought that when I come, I pass their regards to you as the chair. Second, uh, Honorable Speaker, allow me to thank you as uh, the Speaker of the National Assembly. You sent me to represent you, and I want to believe that I did the best since everyone was happy with what you, uh, your comments and uh, how you reported on the behavior and what the aspirations of the late Honorable James Mukwe wanted his people to be. They really said they are happy, and on my, my own behalf and on behalf of the people of Navaholo, allow me also to send a message of condolence to the family of the late Mukwe. Honorable Speaker, I joined in the 11th Parliament where we served with Ms. Honorable Mukwe in the Committee on Transport, and in the 12th Parliament, Honorable Speaker, we also happened again to meet and serve in the Committee of NGCDF. He was a very humble man. And one of the uh, field visits, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Mukwe did a very nice drama when we went with the Vice Chair for the Committee on, uh, the committee on CDF. Indeed, he was a strong man. No wonder he was given the 10th position, top 10, in the analysis that came, Honorable Speaker. He was a, a very astute member, Honorable Speaker, such that when he could stand to talk to his people and uh, enumerate the programs he has, they were very, very uh, eloquently played, Honorable Speaker. With that, Honorable Speaker, I want to pray and ask God to rest his soul in eternity. Member for Mavoko. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, indeed, the death of Honorable James Lusweti reminds me how cruel death is. It depicts the finest and the most beautiful flower in the garden. Mr. Speaker, the humility of the late member is unmatched. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I met Lusweti in 2008 when he was the chairman of Mungoma and was the mayor of Mavoko. He was my member at ALGAC. I was their secretary. And Mr. Speaker, he gave a lot of wisdom, even during those days. Later, uh, little did I know that I'll meet him in Parliament again. And Mr. Speaker, I want to confirm to this House, yes, indeed, we've lost a very special, important person. Mr. Speaker, too, I thank you how you've been of service to this House, to these honorable members. You've stood with us during good and bad times. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I want to remind this House to remember the people of Machakos. We lost the Senator of Machakos. In fact, he's being laid to rest today. And I'm here, Curtis, because of the anti-doping bill. Mr. Speaker, if I'm missing that funeral, I request all these members today in memory and helping me mourn the Senator to pass this bill that will help Kenyans, athletes, go to Olympics. Mr. Speaker, those few remarks, I pass my condolences to the family, and may God rest his soul in eternal peace. Thank you very much. Member from where? Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I also want to join my colleagues 
in uh, connoting with the family of uh, Honorable Sweti. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I really didn't know him much, but the few times we interacted, I could see a gentleman, a gentleman who has no boundaries of politics, a gentleman who has no, no tribal boundaries, a gentleman you could sit and talk like Kenyans and not uh, people from different parts of this country, Mr. Speaker. And for that reason, I really I want to say I, I miss him as a person whom I borrowed a lot whenever we sat down to have a cup of tea. Mr. Speaker, I also want to join my colleagues in really thanking you for the leadership that you have provided, especially during times of hardship, like when we lose our colleagues, Mr. Speaker. You have been there, moving very fast, informing the, the, the ad hoc committees and guiding them and providing the necessary resources so that the families can, can have a lesser burden in uh, preparing to give uh, their, uh, their, their, their deceased uh, a decent uh, send-offs, Mr. Speaker. For that reason, I really want to thank you, and I hope and believe that our colleague will rest in peace uh, in internal. We will have an in, uh, we'll, we'll rest in peace in, in the internal uh, world, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member for Makweni. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. I was personally known to Honorable Lusweti. One time he had a difficult election petition which went all the way to Supreme Court and he was victorious. Mr. Speaker, I also met Honorable Lusweti in the Committee of Trade, Industry and Cooperatives and we worked together very well. He was very humble and uh, was a good example of a Kenyan who cuts across all people in the nation and a symbol of unity. Mr. Speaker, on behalf of the people of Makueni, I uh, would like to uh, share our condolences and uh, condole with the family and the people of Kabuchai and hope that uh, uh, they are going to, to, to have another leader as good as uh, Honorable Lusweti. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I also want to thank you in the support you give to members of this House whenever they have challenges. And especially when you're arresting a member of parliament is a, is a very challenging issue to the constituencies and uh, to the members of the, to the member of family and you usually move very fast uh, and give the necessary support so that they they feel very comforted and uh, they are, uh, the, the burden is lessened so i really would like to thank you for that and for the support you have given members of, of this house uh, is, is, Mr. Speaker, although it's been uh, very difficult and the country has uh, lost a lot of people, at least you send a, a representative while you are uh, at the funeral of our good friend Joe Nyaga, who was also a member of this house, uh, and a, a member who, who believed in uh, Maori Kenya East, Mr. Speaker, and I believe you will take up that mando so that uh, the people of Maori Kenya East know that they have another very good leader in you. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member for Tongaren. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I apologize for coming into the House late. Thank you for the chance to also eulogize with my colleagues over the departed James Lusweti Mukwe. James Lusweti Mukwe was among the three Fort Kenya elected MPs from Bungoma County with nine constituencies. Mr. Speaker, you've heard everybody say about how humble he was and the humility he exhibited. Mr. Speaker, I would like people to know that humble and humility are not just words. It's a way of life. And James Lusweti Mukwe exhibited that because of his formative years. If you notice, Mr. Speaker, he was actually a Quaker like me. So is Alfred Sambu. So is Musalia Mudavadi. I think you can see the trait of humility, which is a Quaker tenant. It's not an, an event, it is a way of life. That one should not use their humble beginnings as a club, a big stick, to cajole, bamboozle, and intimidate their peers because of the humble background they came from. In the Quaker church, we don't allow that. And James Lusweti Mukwe exhibited those tenants very well. In fact, Mr. Speaker, what you did with the Parliamentary Service Commission the church will forever be grateful to you. Because those kinds of bills would actually have bankrupted the family. But what you did with the Parliamentary Service Commission will forever be etched in our minds. And we shall always remember you for that kind of gratitude, that, that kind of uh, extent 
of uh, help that you gave to the family. Mr. Speaker, as we mourn Lusweti, we all need to ask ourselves, are we humble? Do we exhibit humility? Or are we always different? Because as leaders, if you want to be approachable, you need to exhibit those traits. Lusweti was an interesting MP. Every weekend, he was in his constituency. And his home was right next to the new coming up town of Chuele. So anybody could walk in and out as they pleased. He was always in touch with his people. He never feared whether he had money or he didn't. And that is a mark of a servant leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity. For another member for Webuya West. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Let me join my colleagues in utilizing the late Mukwe Lusweti. And most importantly, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank you as the Chairman of Parliamentary Service Commission. At some point, when Lusweti was sick, his insurance expired, and the family was left wondering what next. You came in handy and extended his insurance. And as we mourn Lusweti today, the family is at peace because they have no bills, medical bills to pay. I want to thank you because I was also one of the members of the ad hoc committee and surely you did a great job to us. Finally, Mr. Speaker, I want to correct that there was no member who had any hostile crowd there. I was the master of ceremony and there was just miscommunication in the sign language. So it has been misconstrued by one of the members and I thought it is important for me to correct that because it is on record. Thank you, sir. Farewell. This is uh, so rest in eternal peace. Uh, we'll move to the next order. Order number three, messages. Order number four, petitions. See, there no petition. Honorable Coril. Yes, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I have a petition for variation of boundaries of Ngong Road, Ngong Road Forest to excise thereof that focus of the area of land upon which KMA Estate, Langanda Gardens Estate, Langata View Estate, Shalom Estate, St. Mary's Hospital, Forest Age View Estate, Langata Women Prison, the, poli the police dog unit, Bombers of Kenya, Kenya Bro Bro Broadcasting Corporation, Wildlife Club of Kenya, and International Center of Insect uh, Physiology and Ecology uh, are located, pass one to section 34 of the Forest Conservation and Management Act 34, number 34 of 2016. Hi, Nixon Korir, Member of Parliament, Langata Constituency. The undersigned on behalf of the residents of Langata Constituency, Nairobi County, draw the attention of the House to the following that on 30 June 2020, I presented to the House a petition on behalf of the residents of Sun Valley 1, 2, and 3, Royal Park Estate, Shalom Estate, Forest Age View Estate, within Mugumuini Ward on alleged repossession of land in Langata constituency. That the petition was subsequently committed to the Departmental Committee on Environment and Natural Resources for its consideration pass one to the Standing Order 227-1. That further on 17th November 2020, the Departmental Committee on Environment and Natural Resources, having considered the petition tabled, a report passed on to Standing Order 227-2, where it made various observations and recommendations. In particular, the committee recommended that the law relating to declaration that a forest shall cease to be a forest area with respect to the area of the land upon which KMA Estate, Langata Garden Estate, Langata View Estate, Shalom Estate, St. Mary's Hospital, Forest Age View Estate, Langata Women Prison, the Police Dog Unit, Bombers of Kenya, Kenya Broadcasting Corporation, Wildlife Club of Kenya, and International Center of Physiology and Ecology should be complied with and the law and the land should be excised. Pass one, pass one to the provision of Section 34 of the Forest Conservation and Management Act number 34 of 2016 to support the realization of the National Government Big Four agenda on housing and stop further encroachment of 
Ngong Forest through the practice of allocation and subsequent surrender of the land between government departments under paragraph 161 of the aforementioned report. That in view of the foregoing, the petition finds its basis on the report of the Departmental Committee on Environment and Natural Resources in seeking to implement the recommendation contained in its report table on 17th November 2020. That section 34.1 of the Forest Conservation and Management Act number 34 of 2016 provide that any, any person may petition the National Assembly for the variation of boundaries of a public forest or the revocation of a registration of a public forest or a portion of a public forest. F, that we therefore seek to petition the House for the variation of the boundaries of the Ngong Road Forest Pass 1 to section 34.1 of the Forest Conservation and Management Act 2016. That additionally, recognizing the requirement of section 342 of the Forest Conservation and Management Act, we aver that the variation of the boundaries of the proposed area of Ngong Forest shall not endanger any, any, rare, any rare threatened or endangered, endangered species, adversely affects its value as a water catchment area, prejudiced by diversity, conservation, cultural site protection of the forest or its use for education, recreation, health or research purposes that the residents have continuously engaged the Ministry of Environment and Forest and the Kenya Forest Services and never received any response that was satisfactory. That the matter presented in this petition is not pending before any court of law, constitutional or legal body. Therefore, your humble petitioner prays that the Departmental Committee on Environment and Natural Resources does recommend Pass 1 to Section 341 of the Forest Conservation and Management Act the variation of the boundaries of Ngong for Road Forest to excise, therefore, the 34 acres of the land upon which KMA Estate, Langata Gardens Estate, Langata View Estate, Shalom Estate, St. Mary's Hospital, Forest Edge View, the Langata Women Prison, the Police Dog Unit, Bombers of Kenya, Kenya Broadcasting Corporation, Wildlife Club of Kenya, and International Center of Insect Physiology are located. That the House does direct the Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of Environment and Forestry, to forthwith suspend any proposed action on the said 34 acres until the House considers this petition, that the House does direct the Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of Environment and Forestry, to commence the actualization of paragraph 1 of the petitioner's prayers, including carrying out the independent environmental impact assessment and wide cons public consultation as required under section 34.3 of the Forest Conservation and Management Act 2016, that upon the House approving the prayers contained in the paragraph 1, 2, and 3 the petition of, the, of this petition and any further recommendation, the House may direct that the Cabinet Secretary for the Ministry of Environment and Forestry to submit a report to the House after every 30 days to appraise the House on the process of variation of the boundaries of the Ngong Road Forest. And finally, the prayer that the Departmental Committee on Environment and Natural Resources does make any other resolu resolution that may be determined as appropriate and your petitioners will ever pray. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know, I'm not about to allow any comments, because as you know, uh, this petition seems to follow another one. And it's just trying to actualize some of the recommendations of the other. And I think it would be fair that we just allow the Committee on Environment and Natural Resources to now proceed as prayed in the, in the petition. So I know, I know some of you are very, very passionate about this, uh, not least, of course, the member for SEME, but uh, you will uh, allow me not to allow you to, to make comments uh, so that we, that we don't, we don't um, you know, conflict what is likely to, to be. I don't think the prayers are clear and they are, they are straightforward. So let's, let's refer the petition to the Department of Committee on Environment and Natural Resources to make appropriate um, investigations, inquiries, and act as uh, necessary. Next order. Order number five, papers. Leader Majority. Now, thank you, Honorable Speaker. I beg today the following papers on the table of the House today, Tuesday, December 22nd, 2020, uh, morning sitting. One, Memorandum on Economic Partnership Agreement between the Republic of Kenya and the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Number two, legal notice number 206 of 2020 on the value added tax 
uh, amendment of the rate order of 2020 from the National Treasury. Number three, the annual report for the year 2018-2019 for the East African Portland Cement PLC. Number four, the performance audit report on installation and maintenance of road furniture by the Kenya National Highways Authority, the Kenya Urban Roads Authority, and the Kenya Rural Roads Authority. Number five, the report of the Auditor General and Financial Statements on Ethics and Anti-Corruption Authority Commission, a staff house mortgage and car loan scheme for the year ended that year of June 2020, and the certificates therein. Number six, the reports of the Auditor General on financial statements in respect to the following institutions for the year ended that year of June uh, 2019, and certificates therein. And these are the State Department for Post-Training and Skills Development, Brand Kenya Board, National Humanitarian Fund, Government Press Fund, Land Settlement Fund, the National Environment Trust Fund, the Judicial Performance Improvement Project, which is IDA uh, credit number 5181-KE, the Kenya Airport Authority, and lastly, the National Construction Authority. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, the Chairperson of the Parliamentary Committee on Finance and National Planning. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I beg to lay the following paper on the table of the House. Today, Tuesday, 22nd December 2020, report of the Departmental Committee on Finance and National Planning on its consideration of the Tax Laws Amendment Number no. 2 Bill of uh, the National Assembly Bill Number no. 48 of 2020. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. The Chairperson, uh, Committee on Delegated and Legislation. Mr. Speaker, sir, I beg to lay the following paper on the table of the House today, Tuesday, December 22, 2020. That is a report of the Committee on Delegated Legislation on its recommendation of the value added tax amendment of the rate of tax order 2020, legal notice number 26 of 2020. Legal notice number 206. Yes, indeed. Legal, <laughs> I stand corrected. Legal, legal notice number 206, not 26. Yes. Thank you. The Chairman, Department of Committee on Sports, Culture, and Tourism. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On Speaker, I beg uh, to lay the following paper on the table of the House. Today, Tuesday, 22nd December 2020, this morning sitting. The report of the Departmental Committee on Sports, Culture and Tourism on its consideration of the anti doping amendment bill, National Assembly Bill Number no. 51 of 2020. I thank you. Next order. Order number six, notices of motion. Honorable Kamket, and you notice that Honorable Kamket, I have not approved your report because I was still waiting to see the list of uh, your members who approved the report because it was lacking from the report which was submitted to me. But now I've been shown a piece of paper which has some uh, na names of your members <laughs> and some inscription of signatures. Since I'm not IBC, I cannot be able to verify. But uh, I assume, I will assume for the time being that that is the correct thing. Now you can uh, give notice of your motion. M Mr. Mr. Speaker, sir, I indeed want to confirm to you that the signatures are the signatures of the members of the committee and if there is a need for verification <laughs> I am sure the, 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 we have qualified staff who will be able to do that and the resources, thank you very much <laughs> Mr. Speaker, sir I beg to give notice of the following motion that this House adopts the report of the Committee on Delegated Legislation on its consideration of the value-added value tax amendment of the rate of tax order 2020 laid on the table of the House on Tuesday, December 22, 2020, and that pursuant to the provisions of, the, of Section 6 and 67 
of the Value Added Tax Act 2013 approves the Value Added Tax Amendment of the Rate of Tax Order 2020, published as Legal Notice Number 206 of 2020. Next order. Order number seven, questions and uh, statements. None. None. Next order. Order number eight, procedural motion, reduction of publication period of a specified bill. Leader Majority. Yes, Honorable Speaker, I beg to move that notwithstanding the provisions of starting order number 120, this House resolves to reduce the publication period of the business laws amendment. Number two bill, National Assembly Bill number 50 of 2020, from 14 days to eight days. Honorable Speaker, uh, this is uh, a procedural matter. I believe it was already covered by the motion that we approved at the point of adjourning. But uh, now that we are here, and uh, it's one of the bills where the 14 days have not matured, we might as well ratify it in the normal way. Uh, whereas, of course, we are given authority that should a bill come, you will then refer it to a committee, and then it will be read a first reading the next opportunity. Now, to allow it to be read with all the others, we just thought it to be neater for good order, just to have it uh, to seek the concurrence of the House that we reduce the publication period. It does not affect the processing of the bill because we just have a first read. Uh, that allows the public participation and the debate on it will be when we next reconvene in, uh, in February. So again, we are not shortening the period to process it any further today except the technical uh, first reading with all the other bills that are going through the first reading and then when we meet next, it will just move into uh, second reading to save uh, the House, those few, that few, that's more procedure. So uh, again, I, uh, I want to beg to move and ask our next party in these matters, the Honorable Alden Duele, to second. Honorable Duele. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I, as I second, uh, I think this is just a procedural that uh, we had a motion and so that the committee of this House, Mr. Speaker, with your direction, might resume earlier than the House, somewhere in mid-January. So that this is just giving the committees, the relevant committee, to deal with this bill, do the public participation, and then by the time we are coming in February, then we will have an opportunity uh, to dispense it off at the second reading and at the committee of the whole House. But Mr. Speaker, I think going further, I will advise uh, maybe the leader of majority and uh, the clerk that uh, let us not only reduce uh, publication period for only government bills. You know, now I'm on the other side. So I also want to speak for the backbenchers because I'm also having a bill on the, in the pipeline. So I think as we reduce the publication period for government bills, Let's also look at if there are any bills of private members uh, which can also be read and uh, get the same exemption going forward. I think it doesn't harm. This is a presidential system of, uh, of parliament. So that even the private members' bills can also uh, be sent to the committees. But I think it's a very, very important bill. We have the business amendment bill, which has really helped the people of Kenya uh, in terms of ease of doing business. I'm sure this bill is just to tighten up what we have left. So we really want to agree with the leader of majority on the, on the procedure of uh, exempting it from that 14 days to 8 days. I support. I second. Member for Cassis is uh, trooping out. members, I propose a question, which is that notwithstanding the provision of standing order 120, this House resolves to reduce the publication period for the Business Laws Amendment Bill Number 2, National Assembly Bill Number 50 of 2020, from 14 days to 8 days. Does that the House? I put the question. I put the question that notwithstanding the provision of standing order 120. This House is also to reduce the publication period for the Business Laws Amendment Number 2 Bill, National Assembly Bill Number 50 of 2020, 
from 14 days to 8 days. Will as many as of that opinion say aye? Aye. Will as many as of the contrary opinion say nay? The eyes of it. Next. Order number nine, motion. Approval of agreement for the avoidance of double taxation between Kenya and Mauritius. Question to be put. Honour members, uh, debate on this motion was concluded before the House went to recess, but could not, question could not be put for the reason that uh, the House did not curate then. So I propose to put, I go for one to put the question, which is that this House adopts the report of the Departmental Committee on Finance and National Planning on its consideration of the agreement for the avoidance of double taxation between the Government of the Republic of Kenya and the Government of the Republic of Mauritius, laid on the table of the House on Tuesday, December 1st, 2020, and pursuant the provisions of Section 8, Subsection 4 of the Treaty Making and on KBC Channel 1. Are you the same boy who threw a stone at the Great Kichuk? The Great Kichuk will decide your fate now. Take him away. What is all this, mother? Sashim, have you ever heard the tale about the hare and the tortoise? The hare was overconfident just like you, Sushim. It's thrilling, intriguing, unpredictable with the unique match experience that will leave you yearning for more. It's the second round of the DFB Cup competition of the German Football Association. From the 22nd of December 2020 through to the 13th of January 2021. And it is happening live and exclusive on KBC Channel 1 as SV Elvisberg takes on Mönchengladbach. Your holidays are bound to be exciting on board your true sports partner. for the eat with sardines and because sardines are super gross this was my chance to show everyone what i was made of just when i thought my inventing days were over next on not now go up until you make a step out Never give your love away, we don't get in the best. And I don't want to be without your love. I don't want to be without your love. And you are one of us. on KBC Channel 1. I was never one to give up. I will not stop looking the world over for a doctor who can give me my voice back. Back to El Paraiso. That's where our story began. And where all
all of our memories are found for it, Sha. No, don't worry, my love. Mommy, I'm going to save you. You're going to get out of here alive, darling. Don't you worry, my love. I'm going to get you out of here. Quiero amarte. Tonight on KBC Channel One. Do you know how small I felt? It's sitting there waiting. I know. No, you don't. Switzerland bank account. Check it out if it doesn't exist. If it isn't a money trail. Am I that dispensable? No, you're not. It's really his Of course, life. you're going to say something like that. You were my brother. In the field, you are emotionally unpredictable. You confuse courage with recklessness. I'm not advancing you. You have a son that you do not know. He's reaching for you. He does not need a commanding officer. He needs a father. Go make some good memories together. Crash landed. Two confirmed survivors. No, sir. This is Earth. Remember, danger is very real. But fear is a choice. If we are going to survive this, we fight. On a fine Sunday, the Konanga Street took a break from facilitating traffic flow in the city and played host to a festival of its own kind. The Power Festival, dubbed the first ever public street art festival in East Africa, combined the best of music, art, and film that the region has to offer with state-of-the-art sound. Since its inception a couple of years ago, visual arts have been Power 254's mainstay. More recently, though, they have taken to a holistic approach to art. This event served to confirm just how powerful this holistic approach can be. We're having Power Festival, which is art in the streets. We have decided to bring art to the streets so that people can interact with it, people can have an understanding of it, people can appreciate it in the forms that we are able to display here today. Most of the times our art has been tucked away in galleries, um, in our houses, so we want to bring it out so that people can interact with it on the streets, on their way, so that they're not going to look for it, we brought it where they are, where they hang out, where they pass, where they work, so that they can be able to easily find it. And then from here, they'll know where to find it after it's not in the streets. We basically try to give artists a platform and so oftentimes it's hard for you know local artists or up-and-coming artists to get a platform and to actually get paid for their work. So we're providing them a space where they're able to not only share their work with other people so they can get exposure, but also giving them a little bit of income so they can make a living with their art. With the aim being to showcase East Africa's creative genius through visual and performing arts, there were various products lined up at different stands. And how else to live to the billing of a festival other than 
through variety. Leo hapo unajua watu wanaingia ndani ya street na ni street na kuona magari mengi na imefungwa yote. Then si artist moja ni artist wengi na tunakuja na different variety. Tuna a bit of African wea known as live play and die in Africa. Tunacheza cheza na tumecheza na kitenge, kanga na a bit of West African cloth known as kente. Good in entertainment ya toto. Pablo Lola was in Paris. Ni trampolin. Na basically you know men are living there. Hii kuti kujifanya fala. Unadhibitisha while each of the many stands specialized on a single commodity, the main stage remained dynamic throughout the day. Over 10 artists from East Africa were lined up, each bringing with him or her a different flavor. Song took center stage. However, spoken word was never far away. There's a young man here, come, come. He's told me he has a talent, he's a street boy, but he has a talent of rapping. Like, shit, shit, shit. Zier. Niko tete nitaveta ni mekesha niko anda sijui ya ketepa ni nanuka deja on stepa kama the undertaker topic of the agenda. Niko na arosto na asira kama mteja, ni meruditena kane bukatineza, ita sunishika mateka kama kabaka mtesa, naishi kuteseka la yamza lendo wa Kenya, na shindo kuelewa jusi miliki ata eka. With more than enough goodies for the ear, there had to be enough for the eye to marvel at. When you block off an entire street in the heart of Nairobi and flood it with the best of music, art and film that the region has to offer, you expect nothing short of a festival like what Power 254 put together. Art is a movement that you need to be a part of. With art, you have a voice. You're able to say very many things in very many different ways. So it's a, it's a form of expression and we invite you to experience it in the way that you, you would love to. I just think that in the end you don't have to be a creative to, or be able to draw or sing or paint to come and experience this. I think that's what we're trying to show is you don't have to be a creative to come to power, you don't have to be a creative to come and enjoy art in the streets. <laughs> Now. Ah! Let me get this straight. You're being
being chased by an evil wizard. Smurf, exactly. Stop saying Smurf for everything. Nargamel, run! Blend in. I'm 546. I'm getting too old for this. In the first true blue. According to my calculations, we lost them. Ah! Adventure of the year. Come back here with my staff. Smurfed with the wrong girl. Playtime is over! I am Kenyan. I moved to Finland in 2005 for studies and I graduated in 2005 with bachelor, bachelor's in nursing and uh, last year uh, completed master's in global health and I have been working as a nurse uh, or nurse for like over 10 years and at the moment we are uh, I'm a co-founder uh, of Shared Shares Sunglasses. My husband is from Finland. I met him in Finland after uh, my graduation. Yes, um, we have visited Kenya several times and we have always admired to do some business in Kenya. And actually, during our visits, we wanted to do something meaningful. There were different kinds of business. My husband is, has been an uh, information technology uh, entrepreneur for like 20 years. And we wanted to do some business in Kenya, but we didn't actually know what exactly would, we would do. And then at some point, we, we got to know about um, uh, World Vision. And World Vision, they apparently have s uh, several um, uh, youth programs in Kenya. And so we wanted, we wanted to join World Vision so as to do something purposeful um, to help the youngsters who live uh, in, the slum, in the slums in Nairobi. So through education and, um, and employment. The reason why we, we chose this kind of wooden sunglasses, we wanted something environmentally friendly. And of course today, um, there is global warming and since there is global warming, the sun strength has become more s strong and we, people are having these eye problems uh, caused by this ultra UV uh, rays. Yeah, so we, we thought that, okay, we raise an awareness that, hey, we need to protect our eyesight through eyewear, you know. These, our sunglasses are of high quality. They, are, they have UV uh, uh, protection, polarized lenses. So that's why we decided to do this, especially in Kenya, we thought that, okay, it's, uh, you know, we are in Africa and in Africa, the situation is, is even worse. Like uh, the, the sun shines and, and, and if I remember so well, as I moved to Finland 20 years ago, it, there, there was still, lots of forests and nowadays I don't see that. When I come to visit home, I don't see that anymore, you know. Okay, we have a, a young youngsters, the youths from the slums. So we, they're involved in that um, World, Vision, World Vision Kenya is uh, providing them with initial uh, life skill training, and then shared shares us. We provide them uh, employment. We we give them job, so they train how to make these amazing sunglasses, and they get salary. Mm -hmm. 
one of the best ways to tackle climate change is through afforestation, through planting tree. And when we think about the future generation, well, we, we better act now, act now so that they will, they will have a, a better place to live in. Out of each sold sunglass, we plant, we plant tree, and this same sunglass, 20% goes to uh, um, education and employment of, of our youngsters who are amazing youngsters who are making these beautiful sunglasses. We started planting trees uh, um, this year, January, and uh, so we do it uh, this way that, okay, after, we, are, we, are, we now do it periodically, after every two months. The last lot that were planted were 3,000 seedlings, uh, that was um, in June, and now in, uh, in, uh, in uh, August, I'm going to plant in two weeks' time uh, 2,000 seedlings. We wanted to involve different kinds of people. We wanted to, in, we know, we wanted to brand these shade shares, sunglasses with ambassadors, very ambassadors from various fields, from uh, music, culture, um, you know, sports. So these these um, ambassadors, we use their logos uh, on these sunglasses. But then we thought, okay, we can also make our own shed share collection that is not, you know, branded with anybody or the company or, so these are our shed shares collection. Those are the ones having, are, are named after the big five. This one is uh, Nyati, and then we have Kifaru, Nyati, Kifaru, and then we have Tembo, and then we have Simba, and then we have um, Chewy. Well, Vision provides initial training. That's the cooperation that we do. So they are kind of helping us to find the motivated youths, the, the ones who really want to, to commit themselves in, in doing this sunglass and, you know, change their lives and, and you know, from what it has been. So that's why, I mean, that's how we get the youths, the, the motivated ones, and really potential for doing this. The challenges that we faced, uh, one of them, uh, of course, we were not sure where we can get um, the tools, for example, that we, we might need, uh, materials that we must uh, import, like we must get them from Finland. So those are the challenges that we've, that we've faced. And of course, we have fa faced also challenges with the customs. We are now, at the moment, still trying to, ex to penetrate Kenyan market, and we are hoping we are hoping so much that since this is done for our youths, that since this is done to, to promote our, our, our youth's lives, it's, it's done for Kenyans. I am still hoping that Kenyans can uh, open up a little bit to this new idea. And, you know, it's a win-win thing. You know, you buy these sunglasses, it's not only about, about um, like, it's not only a luxury thing, but it's also protecting your eyesight. At the moment, we sell um, them at masoko.com. I'm like uh, representing Shed Shares as head of sales and marketing Shed Shares Kenya. So I'll be I'll be going to different different uh, market events to sell them physically there. Yeah, on Facebook we are just Shed Shares. You just uh, go to Facebook, search Shed Shares. Then uh, we have also Shed Shares Sweden. Actually, we are now expanding it. Uh, we started also a uh, uh, promotion pre penetrating the Europe market in Sweden and, uh, and Germany. And, and w our experience is that we have been able to sell them well in Europe.
we would want to uh, become a global brand, we'd like to employ more youths, not only in Kenya, also in other African countries, like all over the world, we become global. And, and that's, we are hoping that uh, many, many, as many Kenyan companies come on board and Kenyans themselves. Buy Kenya, build Kenya. In Shedshas, we have uh, we have Finnish a team from Finland, and we have also a team from Kenya. So in Finland, we have uh, a person responsible for sales and marketing in Europe, and then uh, we have um, our CEO, who is my husband. Yeah, the founder, the, re uh, the main founder of Shedshas, with myself. I am now um, head of sales and marketing. Shedshias Kenya, and then we have a production manager, and then we have a designer uh, in Kenya, and then we have employees. We have, uh, when, when Shedshias began, they were, we, we had 12 em employees, but during this one year, uh, increase, we inc they increased to uh, 20. Mi naitua Henry Nganga, uh, nitoka mta Kariobangi. Nilingi hapa Shechia, nili join 2018. Hili uh, kugani mwezi wa ine, around there. Uh, nili, nili, first before nilingi Shechia, nili kugani me join World Vision. Nili join uh, through pasta so we can do training and then so and yeah so before the malize training ya world vision nilikuja training hapa nikafanya training ya woodwork hiyo ni joinery nikafanya for 3 months and then so and nikaingia shechia ah shechia nikafanya training nyingine kidogo and then Sazandu Nikakua enrolled Kua job. His trainings, it's co standard Nikyota and Weza, Iwe Dem, Iwe Boy, Iko Poa, Iko Nikama Universal. Sika Zingu Muna Nikazi Posa, and then the fun. Because I make Kitu Kitu Ekona Sevengi, so Napata Ningolaya Ngolaya Mbao. So Nikama Kitu Nikitu Sama on unique. Assembling the majorly me worked. Me wanna find a job up or even could join his old friends and their arms because uh, you're na itches. Yeah. Hey, it's Omar Jauma. I find a case of a shit share. Nili join hapa Shetia through World Vision. And nili come up nikiwa, nikiwa, I was pregnant. Nikuja World Vision, nili Shetia. Tulikuwa to 12, but say at least tumeongeza, tukua to 20. But Shetia metu saidia, by the way, metu help sana. Ju, most of the girls tulikuwa tu idol. Hakuna kutu kuna fanya, na kuna family na kungojea. You have your mom. Kuna mtu hii, sayo likuwa nabidi uhangtu around, na ilo watu nini ya gedu. Shetu shemi tusaidia, ata mtu wakia wana shida, bethe sijia wana kampani kama hii, juki wana shida, wana stand kama family. Kuna mojo yetu alikuwa na shida, tulisuma mapamoja, anybody mwenye yana yako na shida yote. Hakuna angati sasa kama ile kampani zingine, nile yonatuwa tu, Ofo ndo malizi shuguli zako, alafu utarudi. Iyo wana sama wangana mba kasa dakaza musho. Diki ingia, ilika for three months. Three months, after three months, ndo, by the way, tulukua, three months, after three months, bada utukua tumaza job, ju, kisi kila kitu kwenye kamu, kuna mashina zikuwa zimefika. So, ndo imagine, ndo umekuja training, job itaanza, ukona zile, iki tutafanyika ukweli, ama, sauna jwa, alafu na jwa tutu kiwa mayutu, tutatakanga zile vitu za raka raka. Una imagine three months kabla pia ishe. Sio unangojewa. Ilikuwa but tulikuwa na pia na hope. 
Kwa sema nye hii kitu ni yetu. Ndiyo nye mekamu na nye ijenda kuingine mekujia kia nye kitu ni ye. Alafa at least madirektas walikuwa na sisi wanatupati zile hoops. Watu wame to see lose hope. Yes, kuna mtu ni bado zimekuwa ma airport but sita fika. Tuka endelea mbaka three months. After three months, machine zika ingia, tuka anza job. Tutunutolewa home, kariu bangi. Sato kwa kariu bangi. Sato tulichukulua through peer churches. Kuna hizo maanini. Uwanga wa utangaza kwa chief. Kawa nataka wasa kurikutu. Unini ma youths. Utambo kuna one vision inakuja, inataka ma youths. Kuna vitu na simamia kama wataka air dressing, unataka catering, nini. Saka uko interested, utaenda. Sasi tukienda siku ya kwanza, tuliko na jua, tuli ambo to choose. Yani, nini watakusomea kabla sasa shedisha ikuje. Sasa vile tulienda, kuna wale tulipita, kuna wale tukupita. Sasa wale ya tuli stick up, tukifanya vile tuliko naambiwa. Ndo shedisha ikakuja, ndo tukatuli introduce kwa shedisha. jina naitwa Raivon Mwange e, na waka kama e, team leader ya yeah, mimi ndo na lead my team e, ndio kufanya kazi yenye imetuleta hapo enter process inaanzia from the designer mm -hmm. yeah from the designer designer anakata ana plywood mm -hmm. uh, using the laser machine so aksha maliza kukata so anaipeleka kwa printer so printer eh, ina print ile kala yenye unataka yeah. so after printing tunaipeleka to the other side the, the other workshop where we have several machines yeah so hapo tuko na machine ya lens curve kuna machine ya shaping ya, ya bending ya, ya kuna machine ya kusand yeah then sanding kuna processes yeah after sanding machine kuna 120 sandpaper those are the sandpapers 120 320 na 240 yeah so from there tunaziletea tena kwa room tena ingine where we do the lacquer tunaipa karangi ndio ikuwe iweze kuwa kitu inapendeza yeah ndio inaponga imeparara sana so after hapo kwa lakari tuna zirudisha kwa drilling where we do assembling hapo kwa drilling mali sasa assembling na take place kushikanisha frame the arm and an inch using the inch so after that kisha assembliwa na ileta kwa machine ya ku fix the lens yeah where we do lens fixing then after that yeah kuna ile ku supervise ya mwisho kuangalia kama kama iko sawa hapo ni zikipanguzwa bado waki clean yeah, then zina supervisiwa na supervisor na the production manager wanaangalia quality yenyewe nafaa kutumwa abroad Tonight on KBC Channel One. Are you the same boy who threw a stone at the Great Kichuk? The Great Kichuk will decide your fate now. Take him away. What is all this, mother? Sushim, have you ever heard the tale about the hare and the tortoise? The hare was overconfident, just like you, Sushim. It's thrilling, intriguing, unpredictable with the unique match experience that will leave you yearning for more.
It's the second round of the DFB Cup competition of the German Football Association. From the 22nd of December 2020 through to the 13th of January 2021. And it is happening live and exclusive on KBC Channel 1 as SV Elvisberg takes on Mönchengladbach. Your holidays are bound to be exciting on board your true sports partner. But when my little town fell on hard times, all anyone could afford to eat was sardines. And because sardines are super gross, this was my chance to show everyone what I was made of. Just when I thought my inventing days were over. <laughs> Next on. Not now go up until you make a step out. So you got your hands, so you got your feet. Spend time and loyalty on you. The one you're me have to say. Never give your love away without getting the best. And I don't want to be without your love. I don't want to be without your love. But you are one of us. on KBC Channel 1. I was never one to give up. I will not stop looking the world over for a doctor who can give me my voice back. Back to El Paraiso. That's where our story began. And where all of our memories are found for No, don't worry, my love. Mommy's here. I'm going to save you. You're going to get out of here alive, darling. Don't you worry, my love, I'm going to get you out of here. Quiero amarte. There is a village filled with mysterious creatures who have lived happily for hundreds of years. Until today. Hello, Smurfs. Cargamel! Now, they'll have to escape. Anybody reading this sign? To a world. Cricket is one of the uniting sports in the world. We can empower our voiceless societies. Once you undergo FGM in the Maasai culture, you definitely have to be given out by your father to the husbands. I love cricket because it ends FGM. They know what we want by playing cricket. It is spreading the messages of ending female genital mutilation. at the foot of Mount Kenya is Laikipia County, 
home to the Maasai people. The Maasai in this county live in remote areas like Endana village. Culturally, the Maasai Morans or warriors are pillars of their community. They spend most of their youth in the bush hunting and protecting their herds of goats and cattle and guarding their community from wild animals and human raiders. But in 2007, the warriors of Laikipia County undertook a different course in their lives. They learned a new game introduced to them by Aliyah Bauer. Maasai Kiki Warriors was started back in the year 2007 by a South African lady and it happened that she was doing some research in our village, uh, in our area. Word about cricket spread rapidly, and warriors from Indana and Ilpole villages started trickling in, eager to give a hit to the new game. Upon realizing the interest from the villagers, Aliyah bought cricket gear from South Africa. We went for the coaching the first time, and we went on uh, like several times thereafter, until now we developed the passion for the game. With the help of Cricket Without Boundaries, a UK NGO, Aliyah became the team's coach. Morans, they have a really ideal cricketing physique. They're very tall, athletic, they have a really good uh, bowling physique. And the fact that they learn to throw a spear from a young age really makes them well adapt to being good bowlers. Cricket Without Boundaries trains upcoming and amateur cricket teams in Africa. It also uses the platform to talk to them about HIV and AIDS. Abstaining from having sex. Um, in terms of cricket, we'll talk about abstaining from maybe when you bowl in a coaching technique, keep a straight arm. You will abstain from bending your arm, so we'll use these words in there. The organization also trained some warriors to become coaches. One of the players, Sonyango Olengais, received training and qualified to train his fellow teammates. Personally, my performance in the field made me qualify for, to be a level two coach and also in what I do in day-to-day -day lives because it's not just about you know, this season or thing that you know, we do, uh, you know, the training cricket session, but it's about day-to-day -day in, you know, every day. You know, what you do, is it you know, a thing you love or is it just a thing you do because you know, people do it seasonal? Though it was an unknown sport in the area, the warriors likened it to their wild activities. We could relate it to our day-to-day -day life in our Maasai, like you know, the hunting techniques. We could relate bowling as throwing a spear. A spear. And we could actually also relate uh, batting or a bat, uh, you know, to th that shield. You can, you know, the warriors use it when they are battling or when they are in war. By 2009, many warriors from Endana and Ilpole villages had been attracted to the sport. This led to the formation of the Maasai Cricket Warriors team, the only Maasai cricket team in the world. <laughs> but it was not all easy for the Warriors. ball <laughs> I like bowling. I like playing bowling because I've been playing handball. The, the first challenge that I've encountered is that when you, when you throw that ball, there are some rules. It's not like handball that I, I, I know. The way you're supposed to catch that ball and the way you're supposed to throw it, it was a bit complex for me. So they have to explain to me several, and I feel a kind of, this is more tough. 
But as the time passes by, I come and he get the rules and I apply them and that's the reason I like it. Every Saturday, this group of Maasai warriors gathers here to practice and play cricket. And today is no exception. Sonyanga and Christopher take the team through training sessions. We, we do the body warm-ups, like stretching some part of the body, the upper body and the lower body. It actually prepares us psychologically and physically uh, before the game and that makes us to, to perform much better than if you just go to the field without performing or without doing the practice. At the moment we have very good players in the Masai Cricket Warriors and uh, we are having you know, teams you know, coming up, like now we have two teams and it's a, a great chance uh, for us to you know, take that uh, development to the next level. <laughs> Sometimes back we just used to play cricket just anyhow. But as time went by we actually realized uh, we can work hard on it and uh, you know, do it as a profession. But the challenge is we don't have like uh, equipment. We don't have a good pitch like here in uh, Ndana village. We don't actually have a pitch. So we end up playing in football pitch or just in a bare land, in the wild. But those challenges can stop us from being what we were meant to be. And we believe that challenges are there to mold us. So uh, every like Wednesday, Saturday and Sunday, we come together and train. In 2012, players from the two villages traveled to Cape Town, South Africa to partake in the Last Man Stands World Championships. Last Man Stands, or LMS, is a UK-based leading global amateur cricket organization that brings together like-minded cricketers from all walks of life. Sonyanga, who was among the players that went to Cape Town, recalls the trip with fondness. It was our first time actually to get out of the country. So it was a great opportunity for us because uh, it opened our eyes to view, you know, how other people behave, how is the development in other countries, and also to have that experience, that feeling in, you know, the different kind of playing ground out there. And as Maasai believe that the, the eye that leaves the village sees further. So we gathered a lot of information and we, when we came back, we shared it with our society. But the team did not perform well, and to some, like Christopher Lesekito, it was a challenging tournament for the team. It was tough, and uh, we lost all games, because it was a, our first tournament outside, playing against players who have been playing cricket for like the rest of their life. By then, we just played for like one year, that was in 2012, and uh, it was the tough thing. And, it was actually discouraging and at the same time motivational. <laughs> Coming back home, the team had learned how tough cricket was on international grounds and they were determined to learn and improve. Cricket have got several rules. I can say couples of rules. And for one to understand the rules, it takes like several months or years to understand it. So like the terms they use, like smell the leather, chin music, such terms, they are new terms. I don't think they are even in dictionary. They are not, it's just in the dictionary, the cricket dictionaries. So those are tough terms. And again, uh, field positioning, there are several field positioning. And for one to understand, you must have that passion for the game. Three times a week, they practiced, training hard in all areas like deep fielding. 
Now we are doing some ball work, we are doing some close up catches, and also we are doing some deep field catches, and that makes us more strong when we are feeling. Because uh, at times you find uh, the field performance or the every side performance in the field depends on the on, on the catches. In 2014, the team's dreams came true when they were invited to play at the Lord's Cricket Grounds in London. The Warriors had adapted easily to this free-flowing format, and through sheer determination and hard work came the opportunity for them to play on arguably the most famous cricket venue in the world. I mean, I would never have imagined that we would get the Maasai Cricket Warriors team onto the hallowed grounds of Lords and to play a match here, I think it's every player's dream and it's going to be a special memory for everyone and it's going to definitely be um, in my mind for a long time to come. Uh, actually, you know, playing at Lords is such a great honour uh, for the Cricket Warriors and for, you know, the people who are playing at the last one's son. Sponsors and partnerships... Their training after the 2012 tournament had paid off. In our graph, it was going up. So, because when we went to uh, UK, we reached semi-finals. We played against all people or the former players. So, to me, it was not a tough game, but at least we managed to reach... Uh, uh, semi-finals, which was a good thing. In 2016, the team was invited to Australia, where they played on the famous Bradman Oval Grounds, named after the cricket legend Don Bradman. That was tough because we played against the players who are currently we are competing against players, the current players who are been playing, the young players like us. And to show how much the team had improved, some of the players were awarded for their exceptional play. Christopher was named the best bowler of the day for taking several wickets. At least we manage, we show the world that we can and we are cricketers. In 2014, Aliyah Bauer left the village. Training from Cricket Without Boundaries was no longer consistent. The team also lacked professional grounds and equipment. In spite of these challenges, the team continued to improve. The team have been performing well and we believe we, it's a very, a very strong team. And what really made us to be like that is because uh, we have this mentality that we, we have always to win and we have to perform well in everything that we do. And, you know, being warriors, you know, a warrior is not known to, to be defeated. A warrior is always known to defeat and to fight to the end. So that really motivates us. Because you can even find out that uh, we're actually not earning any money. We do everything out of voluntary. But this is, this is the passion. It's a thing we know it uh, will you know, bring a change in return to our society. At home, the team has been involved in conservation efforts in conjunction with local and international teams through the Last Man Stands Championships. We're involved with the Conservancy here as a result of our relationship with the Maasai Cricket Warriors, which goes back several years. The tournament is dubbed Rhino Cup because the funds raised by the competing teams are directly injected into the conservation of the last male northern white rhino and the two females. So there's, there's two different aspects to this tournament. Uh, the first part is the fundraising aspect for Sudan, the last northern white rhino male left in the, on the planet. The other aspect to the competition is the cricket development side. Wildlife is part of our heritage in Kenya and uh, we really need to conserve it, to protect it, because it's a source of tourists, foreign exchange. It's very important for the country, so that's why we're here. Uh, we are now embracing you know, this wildlife and we are you know, spreading the messages on conservation that we don't actually have to kill a lion for me to become you know, that brave warrior. I'm a brave warrior you know, the way I am. You know, we are always strong. So now we, we can now turn that strength into protecting our you know, beautiful wildlife and you know, for the betterment of our future generation. Sudan is 43 years old and has exceeded the rhino's lifespan of 40 years. He is blind in his left eye, 
But other than that, he's in good health. Sudan was born in South Sudan, but due to war, he and three other rhinos were shipped to the Czech Republic. The animals could not endure the cold environment, and so in December of 2009, they were moved to the Old Pajeta Conservancy. They were brought here to see if they can still breed in a natural way and in, and in a natural habitat, but so far no success. We are planning to do in fetal fertilization, the IVF, of which it has never happened in rhinos before. So we are trying all means to save them because we don't want them to get extinct. The in vitro fertilization may happen soon, and that's why funding efforts by the Maasai Cricket Warriors and other teams means a lot. It really helps uh, because we are trying to raise funds. We don't have enough funds, and it costs a lot of money for the whole process to be carried on. So the, tournament, uh, the cricket tournament is also supporting to, uh, to raise funds, and it, it helps. So we appreciate that. What is particularly notable is that the warriors play in their Maasai traditional regalia in tournaments abroad and at home. Their pomp and color seem to fascinate many. It's interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting because uh, we are used to playing with trousers and then here we are seeing guys who are playing with shukas. It's actually it's intriguing, yeah, it is. Our cricket has got its own rules, and the Maasai too has got its own rules and culture. And we don't have to remove our beautiful attire so that we can play cricket. We can play cricket uh, the way we are, and we love it, you know, we are comfortable with it. Back in the village, the team is using cricket as a tool to address certain practices such as early marriages for the Maasai girls and female genital mutilation, better known as FGM or the cut. Once you undergo FGM in the Maasai culture, you definitely have to be given out by your father to the husband. Back in the 90s, I used to have one of my sisters, my older sister, uh, she used to take care of me and I really loved her because uh, she was like my second mother. I remember immediately when she was, she and I, uh, when the cut, she, uh, she was married off. So when I lost her and, you know, she went away, she's no longer there, very young, you know, she was very clever, very caring. So it was very bad and that is what actually motivated me to stand up, you know, for women's rights and stand up against the female genital mutilation and stand up against early marriages. The Maasai community is a patriarchal one and the elders are the custodians of the cultural values and practices. Fighting female circumcision is going against the elders. After their first international trip, this band of cricket warriors gathered the elders in a bid to explain the effects of FGM. Sonyango's parents recall what the warriors had to say. Enkop naji South Africa ni toka po England. Ne po Sarelelia. Ne 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 punga ke ye na apupu. Ne apa ina maendeleo. Kolwa ke janani. Ne apa ina maendeleo onto yi. Ne jo ne po ajo kolwa apa lenche. Lo apa apa. E min toki. Ah morati onto yi. Amu. Me ata di mana. Wakati hata hawa nakuja, nakuja na pundipundisa sisi polipole tu, polipole tu. Sisi nakatakata, nakatakata, waka sisi nakuja kukubali. Naona pana mbaya sisi napuata, mimi. Kutujua kwesa, nakua maneno ingine. Lakini kama sasa nakaa, kama paka najua maneno, mambo napandipandilika. Uh, uh, prudent 
expenditure of this money is as soon as the taxes are adjusted and the government gets uh, uh, the required uh, monies, the government must be able to spend these monies as per the requirement of the law. We have had cases whereby even monies for COVID has been misplaced or mismanaged or chewed up by few individuals. This should not be entertained. And those who have, who have stolen the COVID monies, I think it is uh, becoming too late for Kenyans to hear okay. what has been done to them. Okay. With that, I support uh, the bill. Thank you. Honorable Amalwa. Honorable Dr. Amalwa. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this bill of amendment of the tax rates, it is coming at a time, Mr. Speaker, when this country, we are still faced with the pandemic. I'm wondering, Mr. Speaker, what the government best on to amend this law. Mr. Speaker, when you look at the positivity rate right now, Mr. Speaker, it's still going up. The issue, Mr. Speaker, is worsening like never before. At the moment, Mr. Speaker, our first line defense, the healthcare workers, Mr. Speaker, are dying. I thought this was the time, Mr. Speaker, the government should put more measures to cushion the country, Mr. Speaker. Unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, it is the opposite. It's the responsibility of the government, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that their people are safe. Mr. Speaker, of course, we know we need a delicate balance, Mr. Speaker, because for the government to run it needs something. Mr. Speaker, the basic principle when it comes to budgeting, you look at your revenue, Mr. Speaker. And if your revenue has reduced, maybe because of the pandemic, the logic dictates that you harmonize your programs, Mr. Speaker. And we know, Mr. Speaker, in this country, as Honorable Bombardi had said, the big problem, Mr. Speaker, is in governance, the corruption. So by us uh, increasing these rates back to where it was, Mr. Speaker, we are not solving the solution, Mr. Speaker. The other day, we were debating about the issue of the Kemsa billionaires, Mr. Speaker. The committee report of health that came on the floor of the House, it was more of a PR exercise, Mr. Speaker. And the same people who are speaking today, Mr. Speaker, they supported that report, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> this is the time we must come out clearly, Mr. Speaker. Of course, we salute His Excellency the President when he came up with the measures to cushion the Kenyans. It was well received. But I thought, Mr. Speaker, those measures of cushioning Kenyans were supposed to be determined based on the situation of corona in this country. The WHO recommendations, Mr. Speaker, the measure is on positivity rates. This is the time, Mr. Speaker, the issue, the pandemic is worsening. I thought the government should put more measures, Mr. Speaker. What confirms to the government that the positivity rate has gone down? Look at the doctors. They are striking all over. They are dying, Mr. Speaker. The situation is worsening. So the government should have extended, should have given more cushions, Mr. Speaker. But it's now contrary to what we are seeing here, Mr. Speaker. So the truth of the matter is the issues of corruption. Mr. Speaker, it's the highest time the government needs to rationalize, maybe to harmonize its programs. Because the revenue is going down, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as we speak here today, I know the government has put in place so many priorities. This is the time we should harmonize those priorities, Mr. Speaker, and have those priority ones and forget about the others. Otherwise, coming here for PR exercise, Mr. Speaker, Kenyans are dying. Doctors are dying. Many people cannot afford food. The issues of the big agenda for Jubilee, this is the time they should harmonize, Mr. Speaker, and drop some to, cor to correlate with the reduction of the revenue in this country. I know we need a delicate balance for the government to move, Mr. Speaker. Of course, it needs money. So we are calling upon legislators. As you look at this bill, let's debate it objectively, Mr. Speaker. I know the government is between a hard place, a rock and a hard place. If we can help Kenyans, Mr. Speaker, so that we can be able to move. But I support, Mr. Speaker. But let's look at the issue of corruption that is leading into wastages in this country, Mr. Speaker. I thank you and okay. I support. Honorable members, the, 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 the less the better. If we can have uh, members reducing their time on their own, we'll be able to have many members speaking. So since top on the list here is Honorable Manzo, I will give him even if I'm supposed to go this other direction, but I'll give now two slots after Manzo to, to, this, to, my, to my right. Proceed, Honorable Manzo.
the less the better. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Because for we don't need me. to repeat ourselves, and uh, you know, we, uh, members have already spoken. Yes, so uh, thanks, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. Mr. Speaker, uh, when COVID-19 struck the world, uh, the reductions of uh, taxes were done, and at the same time, it served as a notification uh, that it will be for a while. So Kenyans anticipated that it will be lowered for that particular moment to stabilize our economy. And, uh, and uh, again, after a short while, when things improve, and now currently they seem to have improved, uh, then the, the rates were going to be sent back to normal, Mr. Speaker. So at all material time, Mr. Speaker, there was a notification to all Kenyans that things uh, in relation to, uh, to the taxes will take uh, uh, that path. Uh, Mr. Speaker, also, secondly, uh, the country, and not only Kenya, the whole world has suffered economically. And Kenya even seems to be doing better than many parts of the world now that Kenyans have adhered uh, to a great extent, uh, coupled with our cl uh, climate, uh, to the provisions and uh, the expectations of uh, measures uh, to counter COVID-19. But it, it is still better now that we are going to, fest to festivities that Kenyans do perform much better because when Kenyans help the country in uh, adhering to the regulations, Mr. Speaker, then the effects, which are very bad economically, uh, are reduced and we are not going to go back to the same place, Mr. Speaker. At the same time, there are services expected to be uh, taken care of. We have uh, social services. The money is going to the old people. It's not there. The bursary is through CDF. is not there. Uh, and uh, the counties also have suffered, Mr. Speaker. So unless uh, we pass this and uh, stabilize, go back to normal, Mr. Speaker, the country will now continue to suffer over a long time uh, to the effects of uh, COVID-19, Mr. Speaker. So without me repeating uh, what others have said, I think it's a good measure. Uh, and during public persuasion, Mr. Speaker, one thing came out very clearly, that a lot of Kenyans felt that this reduction helped a, sec a certain section of people, but not the common monainji. Mr. Speaker, the, the price of hunger never changed. So many other... At home, the team has been involved in conservation efforts in conjunction with local and international teams through the Last Man Stands Championships. We're involved with the Conservancy here as a result of our relationship with the Maasai Cricket Warriors, which goes back several years. The tournament is dubbed Rhino Cup because the funds raised by the competing teams are directly injected into the conservation of the last male northern white rhino and the two females. So there's, there's two different aspects to this tournament. Uh, the first part is the fundraising aspect for Sudan, the last northern white rhino male left in the, on the planet. The other aspect to the competition is the cricket development side. Wildlife is part of our heritage in Kenya and uh, we really need to conserve it, to protect it, because it's a source of tourists, foreign exchange, it's very important for the country, so that's why we are here. Uh, we are now embracing you know, this wildlife and we are you know, spreading the messages on conservation that we don't actually have to kill a lion for me to become you know, that brave warrior. I'm a brave warrior you know, the way I am. You know, we are always strong. So now we, we can now turn that strength into protecting our you know, beautiful wildlife and you know, for the betterment of our future generation. Sudan is 43 years old and has exceeded the rhino's lifespan of 40 years. He is blind in his left eye, but other than that, he's in good health. Sudan was born in South Sudan, but due to war, he and three other rhinos were shipped to the Czech Republic. The animals could not endure the cold environment, and so in December of 2009, they were moved to the Old Pajeta Conservancy. 
they were brought here to see if they can still breed in a natural way and in, and in a natural habitat, but so far no success. We are planning to do in fetal fertilization, the IVF, of which it has never happened in rhinos before. So we are trying all means to save them because we don't want them to get extinct. The in vitro fertilization may happen soon, and that's why funding efforts by the Maasai Cricket Warriors and other teams means a lot. It really helps uh, because we are trying to raise funds. We don't have enough funds, and it costs a lot of money for the whole process to be carried on. So the, tournament, uh, the cricket tournament is also supporting to, uh, to raise funds, and it, it helps. So we appreciate that. What is particularly notable is that the Warriors play in their Maasai traditional regalia in tournaments abroad and at home. Their pomp and color seem to fascinate many. It's interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting because uh, we are used to playing with trousers and then here we are seeing guys who are playing with shukas. It's actually, it's intriguing. Yeah, it is. Uh, cricket has got its own rules and the Maasai too has got its own rules and culture and we don't have to remove our beautiful attire so that we can play cricket. We can play cricket uh, the way we are and we love it, you know, we are comfortable with it. Back in the village, the team is using cricket as a tool to address certain practices such as early marriages for the Maasai girls and female genital mutilation, better known as FGM or the cut. Once you undergo FGM in the Maasai culture, you definitely have to be given out by your father to the husband. Back in the 90s, I used to have one of my sisters, my older sister, uh, she used to take care of me and I really loved her because uh, she was like my second mother. I remember immediately when she was, she and I, uh, when the cut, she, uh, she was married off. So when I lost her and, you know, she went away, she's no longer there, very young, you know, she was very clever, very caring. So it was very bad and that is what actually motivated me to stand up, you know, for women's rights and stand up against the female genital mutilation and stand up against early marriages. The Maasai community is a patriarchal one and the elders are the custodians of the cultural values and practices. Fighting female circumcision is going against the elders. After their first international trip, this band of cricket warriors gathered the elders in a bid to explain the effects of FGM. Sonyango's parents recall what the warriors had to say. Nangabu naji South Africa ni toka po ingilan ne po sarelelia ne 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 ipunga ke ye na abu bu ne abai na mandeleo kolo ke janani ne abai na mandeleo onto ye ne jo ne po ajo kolo abai lenge lo abapa e mintoki ah morati onto ye amu me ata di mana. Wakati hata hawa nakuja, nakuja na pundipundisa sisi polipole tu, polipole tu. Sisi nakatakata, nakatakata, waka sisi nakuja kukubali. Naona pana mbaya sisi napuata, mimi. Kutujua kwesa, nakua maneno ingine. Lakini kama sasa nakaa, kama paka najua maneno, mambo napandipandilika. Kaki, yato negol, ameti tal tu ngana le meyu, na moradi ntu yi, ne tilo yi wu ato nyoraji ato nchi ntu kuna doleta. The team has become bold and they speak about FGM in their training sessions. Once we come to practice, we talk, and once we hear that there is a certain home that they are circumcising a girl, we go there, we talk with those parents, and we talk mostly with that girl who is going and that cut and we in fact even we told her to go to escape from there to go to report that issue the warriors continued to save girls in their community one of the girls they saved fell in love with joseph 
We organized our group and uh, with, with our captain and we went there to that home. That is the opportunity for me to meet that girl. And from there, she loved me and she loved our entire group. And from there, that is where we started knowing each other up to now until I married her. Opposition was strong from some elders, but the warriors were gaining ground in addressing FGM, particularly from their homes. Sonyanga has five sisters. Four of them have undergone the cut, but the youngest, Malawa, has not been circumcised. Sonyanga's mother, a midwife herself, had seen the effects of FGM. <laughs> But she could not speak out against FGM because women in the Maasai community do not have a say about cultural values. But with the support of her son, she was able to further convince her husband. And that is how 19-year-old Malawe Enengais was saved from the cut. But it's not all rosy for Malawa, because the community that she comes from perceives her as not being a woman. If you haven't undergone FGM in the Maasai culture, they won't view you as a, well, a, wo a woman enough. But she says this is not a bad thing. So, like, the men won't even be coming with proposals to your dad, who doesn't know the need for education for a girl. So they'll just keep off. Evelyn Ntikwa recalls what the warriors had to say about FGM and how that knowledge saved her and her sister from the cut. When the Maasai cricket warriors came, they, they said that there, there will be infection of HIV because maybe the woman who is to carry on the activity, maybe she's infected herself and maybe the, the object that she's using to cut the girl, maybe she cut herself with the with the with the object, then she cut the girl with it. Now you see the, it, she, she will transmit the diseases to her. And so when they, they say that I was very scared about HIV, because you know, people usually say that HIV does not have any cure. In order to reach more girls, Sonyango founded the Maasai Ladies Cricket Team just like you know, the Maasai cricket warriors, so that uh, you know, the ladies too can play cricket and they can use it as a very powerful tool uh, to fight for their rights, you know, to stand up for their rights. When the girls you know, come in to play cricket, and you know, that is the time they realize you know, they have a space to fight for in this society, you know, because it's a dom male-dominated society. So when the girls see themselves, you know, regrouping, you know, girls united, you know, coming together, playing this sport, then, you know, the, 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 the small group we have, they are so enlightened and they know what we want by playing cricket. They also introduced the sport to schools, and so far six schools have taken up the sport. And Dana School was the first and the students here are drawn to it. There is no school that did uh, refuse our proposal. And it's a good thing because uh, even the teachers, they understand, you know, the messages we are trying to spread. And they don't want uh, the girls to f drop out of school. And when we bring in this cricket, we will be helping them. My team normally here join them and they go and practice during the, the leisure time or during the break times. So they have been assisting so much uh, the people on how to, uh, to get more skills about the games. My name is Agnes my team. I love playing cricket and, and I love bowling the most. I love cricket because it ends FGM. Nakuja cricket, tunacheza, then after we play, nafsa sapondo tunafunza, kusu FGM. Both boys and girls in the school have joined in the sport. Sonyanga keenly spots promising players like Josvat Lomnyak, 
and pays particular attention to them. Napenda bola, go fast bola. Napenda cricket kwa sababu tunapeleka mbali. I want to be to be the best bola so that I will play for Kenya. Fighting for the girls has not been easy for the warriors. At one point, Sonyanga faced the wrath of an irate elder. I remember uh, one elder threatening me, like, you know, throwing a spear to me or spearing me because we tried to save one of the girls that was at risk of uh, undergoing, uh, you know, she was being forced to undergo the cut. But we stand as warriors. And as warriors, we, we protect the community. And now we, it is not like the past that we protect the cattle. We are protecting these issues because we are literate now. My aspiration for the team is to see them uh, succeeding in life. Seeing one day a cricketer uh, that will say, uh, I, was, I, I got my experience from uh, Maasai cricket warriors or Maasai cricket ladies. And maybe one day opening maybe a bowler or a, a, a opening batsman in cricket Kenya. What started as a fun activity has not only taken the team beyond their village and exposed them to international cricket bodies, but has also made them advocates for social change in their community. We are dropping the bad part of the culture. That is the female genital mutilation. And the good part of the culture, we are really you know, standing up for it and we are fighting uh, to protect it. Cricket, they have really united us as the warriors, as even the community at large. They epitomize the powerful words of Nelson Mandela. That sport has the power to unite people in a way that little else does. It speaks to youth in a language they understand. It has the power to change the world. Tonight on KBC Channel One. Do you know how small I felt? I was sitting there waiting. I oh, know. No, you don't. Switzerland bank account. Check it out if it doesn't exist. If it isn't a money trail. Am I that dispensable? No, you're not. It's really his Of course, not. you're going to say something like that. You were my brother. the next episode of Next on. Not now go up until you make a step out. Say you got your words, say you got your feet. Spend time and loyalty on you. The one you're me have a set. Never give your love away, we don't get in the best. And I don't wanna be without your love.
Japan is a land steeped in tradition and rich with a unique and beautiful culture that extends into its cuisine. Famous the world over for its simple flavors, cooking techniques, and even raw ingredients, the Japanese have truly taken food beyond flavors and into the realms of artistic expression. Join us as we explore the cultural flavors of Japan. Located in the Pacific Ocean, Japan is an island country in Southeast Asia. Japan is considered a unique culture as they have resisted outside influences. The art, design and even the food has distinct qualities only found in Japan. In Japan, um, the presentation of food is very important. We like to uh, so-called eat with the eyes. As a chef, we have different sets of rules in presenting all the food, uh, which a lot of customers might not realize but the way we dish it up on the plate the plate has to uh, be in a certain position um, and the food has to be tall at the back low at the bottom Japanese food is often based on a combination of rice or noodles with dishes made from meat fish vegetables or tofu being an island country seafood features prominently in the dishes of Japan especially shellfish crabs and fin fish all over Japan, the vari various flavors of each dish um, is well worth looking into um, and uh, just track from north to south and try the different flavors. There are three varieties of Japanese hot pot, one of which is even a firm favorite with sumos. So the um, three main hot pots that we have uh, the chankwa nabe, uh, which is what sumo wrestlers commonly eat. Um, it's a throw in anything kind of hot pot in a nice hot uh, clay pot. Um, the sukiyaki hot pot is a very traditional dish. Um, sukiyaki actually means um, to cook in a, a shovel, because that's what the farmers used to do. So they'd put in their uh, beef slices and vegetables in a nice sweet soy sauce broth and have that with some rice. Um, the third one, uh, the shabu shabu, is probably the most popular hot pot. Um, it's just a light broth and uh, you put in your, again, thin beef slices and some vegetables and take that onto your uh, sesame dipping sauce or ponzu, which is a citrus dipping sauce. This recipe uses a wide range of ingredients and can take some time to prepare. To create a sukiyaki cordial, you need to combine sugar and soy sauce. The dish features a number of vegetables as well as silky tofu and a selection of fresh noodles. We also use thin slices of premium beef. As an accompaniment, you'll need an egg for your dipping sauce and some fragrant rice. Before we begin to prepare a traditional Japanese sukiyaki nabe, first we must cook some rice. We're using a rice cooker to cook about two cups of rice. Remember to wash the rice before you cook it in order to remove any starch and then drain off the water. Place three cups of water into the rice cooker and get your rice going. 
An important ingredient in this hot pot is a diluted mix of sukiyaki sauce. Pour 400 grams of sugar into a large saucepan along with 700 ml of soy sauce. Light your stove and continue to stir the contents with a wooden spoon until the sugar dissolves completely, then allow to simmer. Okay, so while we're waiting for that to come to a boil, we're just going to quickly prepare the vegetables to put into the hot pot and then once the sauce comes to a boil, we'll switch it off and have it ready to pour in. First, take a medium onion and slice it in half and then into slivers like so. Now, line the base of a flat cast iron saucepan with a little oil and heat it. We are using a traditional